Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. These are the books that I read in October, plus two more on my Kindle. 17, my goal was 14. Thank you, thank you very much. Not only am I coming at you with an October reading wrap up, but we're gonna rank the October read. Here is our stack of books. The very end of this stack is my new favorite book ever, ever, ever. This is one of the books that I read on Kindle Unlimited, Forged by Magic. I would love to be a cozy fantasy girly. It's not working out. It's too low of stakes. There's not enough happening. I'm getting really bored. We're just gonna go ahead and move on from that one. Blood and Moonlight. The reviews on Blood and Moonlight were like, if you like profiling, then you'll like this book. Profiling? Yeah, sign me up. It was over the course of three days that I listened to this book. The first day and the last day felt like the exact same book, but the day in the middle there, I felt like we were listening to a completely different book. And I know that there's a second book, that probably ties in with the second book. But I was so confused and lost and my favorite characters weren't in that part of the book. Yeah, it's supposed to be medieval. In no world do I think that this is medieval. The vibe that has been created for this universe is giving Sherlock Holmes to me. Calling them profilers too, that's getting a little ahead of yourself. The profiling doesn't exist, but like they're doing kind of, like they kind of had the idea of profiling. It kind of fell flat for me. There is a magical realism element though, if that intrigues you. Okay, babe, we have a new release here, Wildfire. This cover is pink. I do enjoy the camp aspect. Also this guy, he just looks like pretty hunky. So I'm like, mm, he's probably got it going on. And he does, it's Russ, he's a sweet boy. The plot just wasn't really there for me. I did have a little bit of fun that it was a camp themed. I feel like there's not a lot of camp books out there or like that I have come across. It's a rom-com, it's a rom-com, cute. But there wasn't anything like pretty unique to it that makes me think like, oh, your writing stands out. It also did not help that this summer book came out during the fall. That's kind of offensive as a reader that absolutely adores fall reading. Release your books around the same season that your universe takes place. You're doing yourself such a disservice. This book probably would have hit harder had it been summer. I'm gonna be honest, but. Coming in at number 14, we have Ravel. This art is so dreamy. Late 20s, early 30s. And this book stands really firm on that vibe. If you love that era, just like partying, dancing, that kind of thing, I think that you would really, really enjoy this book. I just can't connect with it for some reason. It's just never been an era that I care about. Ravel is a standalone and a debut novel, so I'm really excited to see what this author comes out with in the future. This book is technically fantasy though. The Ravels are a famous family at this time that put on a show, but these types of shows, the way, the reason why they do so well is because of their alcohol prices. And with prohibition in effect, the Ravel family is riding the struggle bus. Now we have our main character, Lux. She's the family's like golden star. She's able to take payment in the form of gems. Use the energy of the gems to create your fantasy, to create the fantasy that the person that's paying in gems desires. The son of the most powerful family in the whole city is like, I'm gonna run for mayor. But in order to do that, he's gonna have to go against his family. He makes a proposition to Lux. He's like, I will pay you all of the gems, all of the alcohol that you and your family could ever want to keep your business afloat. Just be my arm candy be as I run for mayor. And the thing about it is that this guy is able to time travel. There's magic, drama, a uh, love triangle. The flapper girl era, if Great Gatsby is something that speaks to you, then I absolutely recommend you try out this book. Woo! Are you okay? Are you okay? Coming in at number 13 is Wrong Place, Wrong Time. All right, we have our main character, Jen. The first scene, she watches her son commit a murder. The cops take him in. They say, listen, we're gonna keep him overnight. She's gonna try to go to bed. She's gonna wake up and she's gonna go get him and she's gonna figure things out. Like, she wakes up, she goes downstairs and her son's sitting there. She starts to freak out like, what, what are you doing home? I literally had to go to school. And she's like, what do you, what? Checks the date, it's the day before. She woke up the day before the incident. Every day that she wakes up, she's put back and back and back in time. She thinks there's gotta be something that keeps pushing me back in this timeline that I can save my son from 
committing this crime. It was also a slower pace. It wasn't anything super remarkable to me. So we're still on the lookout for a good thriller. Finale! The end of September, I had started the Caraval trilogies. It was Caraval and Legendary, and then Finale was the last one. You don't know what you're missing until it's gone. That doesn't even, don't know what you have until it's gone. Until I read the Once Upon a Time series, which it's coming up, I did not realize how much I was gonna enjoy these characters. At the end of this, my consensus is Jax is Logan Huntsberger. If you don't know what this series is, I highly, 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 highly recommend starting with Caraval, but I don't feel like there's any use in explaining what the third book in a series is about you know it's a trilogy about caraval it's so good and i'm sure that you've heard of once upon a time these are the books that you read before then number 11 we have the invisible life of abby larue this is a favorite this is a favorite amongst book talks so i had really high expectations for this i know now that i should stop having high expectations or just expectations in general for like any book ever because i just have completely different taste than i guess other people. <laughs> was it the best thing ever? No. Did it make me cry? No. Am I intrigued by V.E. Schwab and what else they have to offer as a writer? Absolutely. This book is dual timeline. The story begins in 1714 with Eddie LaRue living her life. She's taught from a very young age to trust the gods, love the gods, but not to trust any gods that come out after dark. You're gonna tell a young girl that. What do you think she's gonna do? So she makes a deal with him. To this one god in particular, the ultimate freedom was a life where everyone forgot her. She could get away with a lot of things where I'm like, her bitch, but at the same time, being able to run away from like stealing and embarrassing moments has nothing on not being able to form a connection where someone remembers you. Let's fast forward 300 years until she walks into a bookstore and meets someone that does remember her. What? I didn't know what this was about upon reading it. I was looking up reviews while I was reading it, looking at the aesthetic boards and the playlists. I didn't realize how badly I wanted to cry, how badly I wanted this book to make me cry because everyone else did. So to be honest, I was disappointed in that. I put expectations on this book again that like it didn't guarantee that I was gonna cry. I don't know why, but that was just like a thing that I had while I was reading this. It was kind of slow. For it to be a chunker and to be slow at the same time, I'm like, okay, pick one or the other, madame. What are you gonna do? Time moves on. Baby girl, baby girl. Woo! Coming at you hot with a trilogy. The hottest trilogy around now. A Curse for True Love came out in October. So this trilogy is popping, hopping right now. This is the Once Upon a Time, what? Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. I devoured these. I would like to say that I did make it through this whole trilogy and the Caraval trilogy without feeling like I had to have live, breathe, eat, everything Jax. I can see the appeal. Hey, listen, that's fine, okay? Because then maybe we can all have a different broke boyfriend and then that will manifest into real life. Like, if you've read this series, you're reading this series, you're obsessed with this series, you need to start Gilmore Girls. Just the later seasons when Logan is a main character, there had to be pulling some of Jax as a character out of Logan Huntsberger. Except for the blue hair. The blue hair, Logan would never. The Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy is a spin-off of the Caraval trilogy that I was talking about earlier. Caraval, Legendary, and Finale. Jax makes his first appearance in Legendary and then he has a lot more of an appearance in Finale. And he's got his own series here with Miss Evangeline. Jax is the Prince of Hearts. He's a fate, kind of like a god. We also have our human Evangeline. She believes in true love. She's lovesick, just like all of us. You know, she's just, she's one of the girlies. One of her girlies um, is now gonna get married to her mans. What? She's upset about it. So she's like, I'm gonna make a deal. And she made a deal with Jax. When she made the deal with Jax, he said, listen, I'll help you, but you have to kiss three people of my choosing. And she's like, her, okay. Throughout these books, they're going on quests and shit. People are falling in love with the new girl in town. It's drama, it's fun. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Bridgerton in a way. With the characters and the balls. So many people feeling entitled. 
home down please i like the second one the best the first one the second best and the third one if something's not broke don't fix it that is just what i keep saying about this curse of true love it has everything to do with the narrator on the audiobook the caraval trilogy and these two were done so well on audio we got this one and they added a fucking man when has adding a man ever helped anything be warned if you listen to this on audio <laughs> Get a round of applause for my boy that hasn't made an appearance in 14 years. Woo! Yeah! We see Jackson in the building. We see Jackson in the building. 14 years since the last Percy Jackson, and it's not a spinoff. I love Grover. I love Annabelle. Anyways, okay, so here's what happened. The trio is back. The trio is back. Are we going to pick up where we left off? Or is it going to be older and it's going to be a kid? And I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot, st I, I couldn't stand it if it was his kid. But no, we we picked up where we left off. It's time for Percy Jackson to start thinking about colleges. The college that he wants to go to, he needs to have three letters of rec from gods, minor gods. I'm happy to say that this is quest one of the three quests that the trio is going to have to go on in order to get him his letter of recs. And we'll have to ship him off to college eventually, but for now, like, we get... Percy for the next three years. How exciting is that? We have six books left. Here's our next Kindle one, The Christmas Star. I've got it started. To tell you. The Christmas Star's PR packages have been everywhere on my For You page and they've been so, so cute. Been on the lookout for some Christmas books. We're gearing up to head into our 2023 holiday season. I tried to order the book. It wasn't available yet. What's a girl gonna do? It was on NetGalley where you can read arcs of books for free in exchange for a review. So I signed up for this app and then I sent in a request. I got accepted. I had to figure out how to download it to my Kindle. I really took a lot of steps in order to read this book and I really enjoyed the book. Earlier on in the week, I read my first ever celeb trope. I really thought that I would never ever enjoy a celebrity trope. I'm ecstatic that I'm like, okay, this is a good trope. After about two or three of these tropes, I'm not gonna be in it to win it anymore, but I was already on this high. When I heard about the Christmas star and I saw that it was a celebrity trope I said sign me up our FMC is Gwen at the beginning of the book her mom gets remarried her dad passing away at an earlier time in her life is brought up a ton throughout the book her new stepdaddy's nephew is the most famous actor out there Gwen goes back home from the wedding she lives in New York where she's currently doing her residency to be a doctor she decides to take a month off of work the day after Thanksgiving she was gonna fly to LA stay with her mom and her new husband for the next month the night before Gwen is supposed to head back to LA to stay with her mom her mom's like hey guess what me and my new husband are gonna move to Japan and Gwen's like, what the fuck? What do you mean? What am I supposed to do? She decides to go back home and stay at her mom's house still. That's when she runs into Caleb. She runs into him there where he's gonna be hiding out for the next month as well because he just needs a break. He needs a break from the media. He needs, you know, the whole thing. Caleb, the celebrity is written so well, so down to earth. Really am excited to see what this author does next because this is a debut book so highly if you're looking for a seasonal read highly 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 recommend this book i am going to be buying it for my shelf because i liked it that much the only purple house in town only witch book that i read in october i talk constantly about witch books and my love for witch books when i talk about witch books i talk constantly about anna guire and my love for anna guire's witch books she does a really good job of writing witchy fiction rom-com so this book was my most anticipated witchy book of the year. Iris is our female main character. She's not doing so well financially, mentally. She doesn't do so well with her family. She's kind of like, just like the odd duck. Her great aunt passes away and leaves her the purple house. Rent out the rooms just like it's an apartment building. That way she gets money right into her pocket right away. Next, we got our male main character, Eli. And what Iris doesn't know is that Eli remembers her. Back when they were in elementary school, someone was picking on Eli. And Iris stepped in and she stopped the whole thing. He remembers it. Now he's this like mega millionaire that works on apps develops different apps he happens to cross paths with iris as he's selling his grandma's house at the same time that iris is moving into her new house 
So he decides, okay, listen, I'm gonna run a room and see where this goes. The characters that end up moving into this house are so fun, so amazing, so well written. They all have their own things going on. They're all kind of dealing with their own things. It really covers a wide variety of what's going on just in society today, but also they all have to come together for certain things, certain events, certain mishaps that they need to be a team for. I had so much fun reading this. I could not recommend the only purple house in town more. So good, so good, so freaking good. Number four, we have The Bodyguard. I literally, I, I picked this book out because she has red boots on and I just think that that's so cute, so kind. I love it. I was telling you a couple books ago about how I read my first celebrity trope and I really fell in love with it, really enjoyed it, did not think that I would enjoy a celebrity trope and I had so much fun with it. This is her, The Bodyguard. So the fun thing about this is that you would immediately think, oh, maybe he's The Bodyguard. No. This bitch is the bodyguard. And Hannah is just this badass girl boss. She's got some stuff going on in her personal life. Hannah works at this company where she's trained to be a bodyguard where you would never expect it. She gets put on assignment for our boy, our male main character, Jack Stapleton. It's just supposed to be for a couple days while he's in town because he went off grid like a couple years ago. His mom gets sick. He decides I'm gonna stay at the family ranch for four weeks and his team is like, oh no, you're not, not without this bodyguard. So she's gonna stay with him. And the rest is history. I'm not kidding when I say for a Friday night, get yourself a drink, get yourself a puzzle, put, get this on audio, sit down and have such a good night. This is the era of the rom-com. I just keep thinking, it was a bright point in my life. It was a bright light in my life. Number three, top three, top three, top three, top three. Can't tell, I've been watching Blue's Clues in the morning. Sterling House, number three. So fucking good. House is a gothic fiction or it's a goth gothic fantasy. It's something like gothic. It's gothic in the way that Wednesday Addams gives gothic. I know that it counts for something to say that no book has ever made me want to get a special edition before. Like go out of my way to seek out a special edition and pay those crazy prices. This book did. This is literally one of my new favorite books. There's pictures and drawings. It's not so realistic that your mind can still wander and fantasize and it can kind of still be the way that you see it in your head which i like whenever pictures are too realistic it kind of ruins it because i'm like well that's not what i saw in my head i don't like it as much but unless it is exactly the way that i saw it in my head then i would love it but sometimes it's not and we have opal she grew up in this town that's kind of haunted and just like very eerie her mom passed away years ago she's taking care of her brother she has to work all the time to make ends meet this house has always been just, you know, at the top of the hill, it's kind of keeping Jumanji to me. You know, everyone walks by the house and like looks at it and it's just like eerie and creepy. Opal, for as long as she can remember, has always dreamt of the Starling House. And what could be inside? What could be going on? There's so many rumors floating around town about the Starling House. Opal is just sick of it. She's like, I'm gonna figure this out. Against her better judgment, she marches right up to that door, meets the caretaker. He hires her as a maid. She cleans for weeks that turn into months, learns things about this house and it's a quick read it's a standalone five stars I definitely recommend book number two dun, da, da, da. Fourth week. we've got our female main character Violet she's off to college it's a college that you go to you can be a healer you can be a writer a writer w-r-i-t-e-r -E and then a writer r-i-d-e-r the writer, W-R-I-T-E-R, -E is actually like the scribe quadrant. And her whole life, she's been training to be a scribe because that's what her dad was. He was very successful at his job. He passed away, unfortunately, and the rest of her family are writers. Her mom's like the person in charge. Her mom's like the lieutenant or whatever. So she's kind of a badass, but she's also kind of a bitch. And she's like, listen, we're not gonna be in the scribe quadrant. Even though if you don't pass the writing stuff, you die. Just like you're gonna do this or you're gonna literally die. I don't love that. Fourth Wing is the first in a series. This book is Violet getting to college, bonding with dragons to see if she even gets a drag dragon at all. It's the dragon that picks the writer and not the other way around. Like, listen, humans, you guys are just little people. Like, we are the ones in charge. And I love that aspect of this writing. Gosh, some of these characters, they just think that the world revolves around them when it doesn't. The hottest, the hottest character, Zayden. You're gonna meet him. I truly think 
you don't need to know anything else go into this. This is kind of a chunky book. It's paced so well. I'm so happy that I get to be alive during the time that Fourth Wing is on this planet being written and being released as we speak. I think that that is a beautiful thing. I love also how it's brought so many people together. This book has caused like a chatter and talk and popularity like I've never seen before in a book. It's really an excellent time to be alive because Fourth Wing is here. But fourth Wing is number two. What's number one, bit? Oh, just my new favorite book in the whole entire world. Tear Twisted Crowns. This is the second in a duology. My husband is in this. Elm, my husband. Oh, this book is how me and my husband met. One Dark Window is the first in this book. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I have no idea how to explain it to you. It's dark fantasy. I know that that was kind of anticlimactic for this being my new favorite book and also being a 16 <laughs> star read. Joe Gillig is my new favorite author. I literally don't know how to describe it. Read it. It's the most unique I've ever read. It's hot. It's scary. Spooky. Weird. Magical. It's everything. If I could only read one book, it'd be this one. If I could only read two books, it'd be this duology. I just want to tell you to read it. Thank you so much for listening to me with my reading wrap up. Really excited about this month and I wanted to document that. I wish you a gorgeous November. Thank you. See you next month. Bye.